Toast to Life podcast, baby. Hey, the man. most authentic, oh. most organic. Hey. Life let's, is great. You feel me? Life let's is great. Go. Energy is here. Yeah, yes, take sir. a toast to that. Yeah, my guy to the left, all the way to the left. Yeah, I already Mr. know. You already know your boy Dylan. That's, hey. that's everybody's favorite, according to <laughs> the sources and people. Okay, okay. <laughs> and today, we obviously, I'm Do School. If you guys don't know this, thank you for tapping the man in and himself, listening. The man of the hour. Nah, that's you. That's hey, you. It's all of us. We have. It's all of us. Man, this, this is at the right time, at the perfect moment. We have Mr. Stephen, 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 Stephen. Damn, I'm fucking Stephen. it up. Oh, you good? You good? You good? But my boy Stephen, owner of the infamous clothing brand, bro, a, a very unique clothing brand movement. Thank you. Called Thank God's you. Kingdom. God's bro. Kingdom. Let's go. God's kingdom. Hey, give it up for God, man. It's, it's, it's really Same. for God, man. For God, how you doing, bro? I'm doing incredible, man. Living my best, my best life. Man, all right, so for the people that don't know you, yeah. for the people that are going to get to know you now, where did you grow up? Where were you born? Where were you raised? Yeah. What did that look like? I'm from the north side of Long Beach, California, you know, and grew up in the Parwoods, which is a project, um, and it's a section of, like, three huge apartment complex, like, huge. I'm talking about, like, it's a whole entire big block filled with, uh, it's a government Section 8 uh, property. Okay. I grew up in Section 8. Um, I grew up with parents where they rely on uh, government assistance. I grew up in a crypt territory, uh, all blacks. I'm the only Asian. I just choose not to game bang. I choose to stick with my skateboard and just, uh, you know, be that guy who cracked jokes and just have fun, you know? <laughs> Are you a only child? Do you have siblings? I have a brother. Um, from the same mom and dad, I have an older brother, four years older than me, and I, um, my dad had three different separate like baby moms, wives. So I have an older sister in Cambodia I never even met, never even met. And then I have a baby sister who's 18 years uh, difference, and she lives in South Carolina. Oh, shit. So your, your whole time growing up, it was just basically by yourself? Um, I mean, it was with my brother, but he was always out mm. and getting in trouble, and I was always like outside too, but in the in the hood, like my brother would be in Cerritos, I'd be in right outside my building, and yeah. So a lot of times I would just be with my parents because my my brother was like so on his own, you yeah. know, just not trying to be with with us. So growing up, did were you you are a a good an amazing person for today's episode, right? Because Thank you're you. not just motivated embraced and you're an owner of a clothing brand that has a name of something super powerful yeah you know and for most people to be an owner of a clothing brand you have to have some style yeah you, you, you gotta have some inspiration to yeah. style this way yeah and have vision so my question here is were you always stylish throughout growing up Man, I feel like since the second grade because I could remember consciously when I first decided to choose ma let me pick my own outfit. Let me wear this, mm. right? So, obviously, our parents dress us, <laughs> right? They dress us. Yeah. But I remember when I when my parents got divorced and I moved to, uh, from outside of Long Beach, uh, L.A., Norwalk, then to, to Virginia, a whole other side of the country, total culture shock. In the snow, uh, I just remember consciously, I was in the second grade, and we're looking through the drawers. And this is around the time, to be honest, I didn't wear underwears. I didn't wear, you know, tidy whities at the time. I just thought you should throw the jeans on. I'd be butt naked and just throw the <laughs> jeans on. You know what oh, I'm saying? Yeah. He said, going full commando. <laughs> fuck that. I'm ready for every situation. Sometimes you might accidentally zip your, you know, your penis. Oh, in. yo, that's the fucking worst. <laughs> but I was a kid. And I remember looking at the, the drawer like, ma, I call my mom ma in our language, ma. Like, ma, let me, you know, I want to pick my flannel. Let me, I, want, I want this flannel. Yeah. And then, you know, it went from there. Being conscious of what I choose to wear. Yeah, it's self-expression. Age. Yeah, that's. I don't thinking about that. Yeah, I think growing up, I think now kids have a little bit more freedom, right? But yeah. I think growing up, like our parents would yeah, have our, like, our clothes throwing this down. on, you, throw this on. Don't wear yeah. this because it has this. Yeah. Don't wear that because that yeah. represents that. Uh-huh. And it's worse when it um, you go to a school that has a uniform. Right, you can't it throw anything strict. on, so you have to wear the uniform. The collar like it's blue, blue, <sighs> Dude, navy, that. white collar. Yeah. Uh, I wear the same shit the whole week because I didn't have any more, bro. <laughs> yeah. No, because that's true because everybody growing up, if you wear anything that has some, like, 
pictures or any sort of different old English writing. Uh, it looked gang related. Gang related. Yeah. It was, you shouldn't wear that because not, that's not the representation yeah. that we want for you. Exactly. And now it's like, bro, it's how you said, being aware of your surroundings, being aware of yourself. Yeah. yeah. Being you. Right. Can't be better than being you than you. Yeah, like, exactly. No one, Can't no one do that. True. No, no one can be, no one, no one here, no one like Ashes anywhere. Yeah, no one anywhere can be you. It's you yourself. It's just, do you have control of your life and your decisions, or do you let somebody else make that? Mm. Obviously, as kids, you know, parents are trying to, we're trying to show them right from wrong. Yeah. And we hope that whenever they get older, they they can make the conscious decision yeah. to that. So when did when does this come about? When does God's kingdom come about? Where does the name come from? Where does, yeah. when when does this inspire? <clears throat> like, it, did you go to college? Did you go, um, did you go to fashion school? Like, shoot. for the people that are going to ask, like, yeah. I need to go to fashion school to be a Man, fashionista. I'll tell you it all. Let's run it. Look, I, I did, for the first time in my life, listen, I've, I graduated high school. Mm-hmm. I've graduated college. I have my degree. Mm-hmm. And I've, I've gone to the corporate world and lived a professional life of, um, in AAA car, uh, like, car, auto, and life insurance. Um, and being a salesman at Honda, living that professional world of like, you know, throwing a suit on. Yeah. But, um, and did all my study for that. But when I chose my calling, because this, this is a thing of, you know, there's three different types of factors of earning an income to make a living. You can either have a job, mm-hmm. you can have a career, or you can have a calling. Ooh. I had a job. I worked, you know, it's crazy, like just, just be a hundred. I used to work at a nail salon. I used to design paint nails. So that's where it kind of like started. Like, yo, I know how to play with brushes. I know how to play, play with paint with a thin stroke. I could make illusions of flowers, you know, cheetah prints. Easy. Make a watermelon toenail. <laughs> <It's easy. laughs> Damn, so we're... we're <laughs> yeah, don't care. Yeah, so you were doing that. I would swear to God, like, you would never pitch me, like, on a stool brushing brushing people's feet bro i'm talking about the most nastiest dirtiest feet you could ever think of in the oh, in the yeah. freaking south of Cali- uh southern Cali- i mean uh south carolina bro i'm talking about some rotten.com feet no cat bro <laughs> Yo. toes this thing and it's curling under now oh, and no it's so way. much cat like uh callus it's just it's just shredding shriveling apart like melted cheese nasty all over the the freaking the water in the tub right the spa tub and I had, like, all my coworkers wasn't willing to do it because she was, like, a homeless lady. But I was willing to do it. That's right. I'll do it. You know why? Because before that, before I became a nail technician scrubbing feet, I was a, uh, I was a drug dealer. I was popping in the streets, like, in Paramount, Long Beach, and Compton. My name was well known. Like, my street name before was called Stilo. They used to call me Stilo. Hey, Stilo, go Stilo. When I pull up to the party with these four locals, it was like a big eagle for me, you know, like, because everybody know me because, you know, I'm that plug. So I've been to where my ego was so like, so like, my my ego was so high that I had to humble myself because I saw the detriment of that. Where um, you know I started living a facade life where um, a lot of my my most authentic people started to stray away from me because yeah, just living a dark world, cursed world. Yeah. Um, I wanted to be so humble and I was inspired by Jesus when when Jesus was even he the power of imagine you have so all the power in the universe that you could wipe out mankind. You could send a legion. A legion means I think it's like um seven thousand angels, a guard like like guarded angels like can wipe out, you know, say so many people. But um so humble to even scrub, you know, your disciples' feet. Yeah. Your servant, like the one who like who who works with you, scrub but, their feet. But when did, but when does this wake up call come though? Um, because I I feel like everybody has it at one point and will have it at their own time. Yeah. Um, it doesn't. Sometimes it doesn't come as fast as one would wish. Yeah. But it but it but it always comes at the, the right time. Yeah, yeah. The wake up cup always comes at the right time, and the way you're talking about this, and I know that's what we're gonna get into right I'm not now. Kind of like. No, you're good, you're good. But But it's just because now this is the calling. This is what you want to put out there. You want to give us the background of what you went through, but you're you're not your past, right? It's built up to it. Yes, correct. That was a job, right? Like, I could just fast forward. You know, I was inspired by God, by Jesus. Like, yo, being able to be so humble and powerful, powerful, so humble, I'll scrub your feet, bro. I'll even scrub it. That's why I'm willing to do it. 
because I was so egotistic and so prideful. I ain't, but I ain't finna. What I look like from the scrubs and feet, you know. But if God can do that, Jesus can do that. Oh, I'll do it too. Yeah. And now look what it what it brought to me, right? So then went to the career, right? Having a professional, any I'm sure people could relate. Having a professional career, There's a lot, you know. Yeah. And at the end of the day, you still can get stuck and feel unfulfilled. You're unfulfilled, mm-hmm. right? Say you make a decent amount of income, say six figures a year, but but still it's it's not filling. Yeah. So when I was working in the cubicle in the office, dressed in a nice suit, you think that looks like success, right? That's what was taught upon us. Yeah. Um, I was in that cubicle feeling like 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 dead inside, you know? Cause I, I'm just naturally just creative. Like I just think of visions and ideas. I'm in a cubicle as much as I try to <clears throat> share like all these whatever like rules that they all have and um the policies, like I can't help but to think of ideas, like uh, visions and just crack jokes. I don't know, I'm always like in my own world. So I feel like it robbed a piece of my soul, you know? I'm giving a career my like the most valuable currency, which is time, right? Like that's what you're offering. Okay, a career is paying you six figures. That sounds like success. That's our motive. Okay, I'm getting six figures. Yeah. But you're giving them your time. You would never, <clears throat> even though you make say a, say you buy a pair of Jordans, say it's 180 dollars. Like say 210 with tax. You know, in the next 30 days, you can actually return that and get a refund. But if you spend 210 seconds. You won't even give it that one second back. So when I realized that, how our time is, our, the currency of time is more valuable than the dollar itself, yeah. I was willing to make the sacrifice and quit. Quit that career. Even though, obviously, it looks great, and it is great, Facts. but there was a calling inside. The calling inside means, like, the vision just keeps itching at you. The door keeps knocking at you, like, yo, create this brand. Like, oh, yo, like, make this design. Like, you know, w- whatever each individual has, there's, there's always something itching or calling inside, but they don't have the courage to even listen. Everybody has it. Everybody has, oh, yo, you should create this new yogurt, like, like with just oat milk. Everybody has an idea. You know? Everybody has an idea of what you should be doing, but no one ever has that, hey, what can we do to do this? Yeah. No one has that that game plan. No one has that, how you said, that courage. I mean, it's courage. It. What's the worst that could ever happen if you just try it? You right. fail? Oh, shit, you failed. Okay, then get up. Try right. it again. Try it right. a different way. Now you learn. Right. Learn from the mistake that you just made. Right. And I'm glad we get into this because I think this is something we just talked about uh, this whole week, man. And this is about, man, we have this all in front of us. Yeah. We have the opportunity, which a lot of people don't have an opportunity. Mm. And this week itself, I mean, it was just a self-reflection type of ordeal, man, where yeah. it's just like, man. We left the gym so late. Thank uh, you, God, man. Thank you for yeah. allowing me to do this. Exactly. Allow me to get up and have the opportunity to work out. Allow me to have the opportunity to breathe, see, feel. My situation might not be the best, mm. but you at least allowed me to be here. Yeah. And I'm going to figure this out because he does not put you in no situation that he doesn't know that you won't come out from. Right. He puts you in the right situation because he knows you're going to be better version right. outside of this. Right. Uh, Inky Johnson has said it When you come out of that tunnel uh-huh. When you come out of that dark space You are not the same that when you once went in Right it, Yeah. You're, you gotta grow you, you don't start from from. Now you started from experience yeah. You know what I'm saying You don't start from like scratch You started from experience yep. Nipsey said it The best teacher in life is it, it's, mm, yeah, it's, it's experience bro It's, it's life yeah. The best teacher in, in this world is, is experience It's life I can't tell you how this feels like if I've never went through it. Bro. Right. Because you fully understand now. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to sit here and tell all of our listeners and viewers that are watching and listening how to create a brand of, of clothing. Yeah. I never did it. Yeah. I can't tell you what it feels like to give up. Yeah. In this space because I never did. Mm. I could tell you how it is to. Persevere. Get, yeah. I could tell you how it is to give up on things that I didn't feel attached to. Uh but now this attachment that I have is crazy. Right. It's a purpose now. It's your mission. Your life it's purpose. our mission. Man, mm-hmm. Dylan knows this too. He, he as quiet as, as this guy is. I'm like, very quiet. I'm just very observant. Yeah, yeah. I'm he, very observant. He's man. observant. But yeah. when we talk about it, we're just like, all right, let's go back and forth. Right. Now, let's unlock your, your passion and your gift. Yeah. And let's do it together. Yeah, let's do it together. You know what I'm saying? So here you are. 
God's kingdom. You 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 took the chance. You quit your nine to five. You yeah. Quit, you quit that well, on paper what it looks at success. Exactly. To go into something that societal dreams. Mm. This is the dream of a society. But what about the dream God has for me? But why why clothing? Why didn't you why go into shoes, hats, or anything? Yeah, you well, know you crazy? did hats, obviously, but yeah, why clothing? Why clothing. <clears throat> you know it's crazy. It's always been a calling. Like, I feel like your purpose is a is always going to reoccur at you. It's always God is always knocking at your door, but you fail to open, right? So I feel like the first time was this. Um, someone who gave me hope was a a remote friend of mine who we had PE together. We grew up since the ninth grade. His name is Keenan Jackson, also known as YG. Right, so we grew up together. We grew up skating, and he was inspired by my drip. He like we be in, in, in a PE, and we sit on the bench. You know, we changed to our like you know PE shorts. I went to Paramount High, and he's like, "Dang, bro, bro, would you get bro them shoes? Whore." And he would stutter at the time, like, w -w 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 "Where you get them from?" He always be asking where I get my my shoes, like where I get my you know my drip. And it's just because I'm a skateboarder, right? Yeah. And he was inspired by that. He wanted to skate too. He started skating. He asked me, "Bro, when you gonna teach me how to skate?" And we'd be skating at Village Park, you know, in Paramount. And um, I felt like that was a sign, right? You see, obviously, fast forward, like, he was a friend where I was like, yo, I saw him made it. And I, and I thought, like, being 50 Cent or being Eminem, whoever it is, you know, who made it, like, that's just a, a fantasy. Yeah. It's not actually real. But it is so real, like, that someone who I grew up with, he made it. He got, he got signed, well, you know, he obviously did his thing. And then um, he inspired the world with his fashion from West Coast fashion, right? And I'm like, okay, that's a sign. You know, like, if I can inspire, like, even one of my homies who obviously made an impact across the globe, yeah. cool, that's a sign. And when I was living in South Carolina, sign number three, which is another reoccurrence, it's, um, it was a Haitian married woman, you know, probably in the mid-30s, very gracious, always elegant, a nice dress, you know, Rolex watch, nice car, like, the, who you think will be successful, you know, like, amazing career, that, impact, that's it. successful, yeah. like, family, if, kids, yeah. you know, beautiful home. If success was in a picture, that's what right. I was. <laughs> she was so graceful and elegant, right? Like a goddess. And and then uh, she would be like, Stefan, like, like I, I would love for you to style me. How, like, like yo, you like, I would, how much would you charge me to style me, to, like, you know, be my stylist? <clears throat> and I was flattered. I'm like, all right, you know. We go to church. Maybe she's just trying to encourage me, like trying to like, you know, gas me up. And then, but every single Sunday, she'd be like, I'm serious. How much would you charge? And I was so flattered, like, yo, this is so easy. And I just love it. I would love to do it. I don't even know how to charge. How am I going to charge you to shop for you and pick pieces for you? Because she has, she don't have time for it. She's so in her career and also involved with the church. So um, I take that as a sign. I didn't listen. I didn't open that door, Right. Then fast forward, moving back to California, I'm working in the professional world, AAA um, and, and like say Honda. Yeah. I spent so much, and I listened to Russ, uh, one of uh, Russ's uh, podcasts, he was saying, your calling, your purpose, your passion is something like, be aware of your energy. When you're ever, whenever your energy is most highly elevated, you know, and be aware of that. Yeah. That's your call. That's your purpose. And I'm like, all right, the night before I, I go to work wearing the off, I mean, a suit or in the morning of, why spend so much time, like, making sure it's the lap was perfectly, like, 1.5 inch to make sure the sleeve from outside of my, like, blazer is sitting at 1.5 inch to match the, the length of the collar, like, and make sure I'm, like, tailored and trim at the length of, you know, the, the leg of my trousers. Like, why? Why spend so much energy on that? So that was sign number three, you know, and I also learned, learned that um, it took me a while to actually understand it, but it was so common for us that they teach us to follow your gut. I, I didn't listen. Yeah. I, I listened to my mind, what society was teaching me, have a stable career, you know, like um, 80 to 100K plus, that look, that's, that's pretty success. good. You know, yeah, they, like, I'm listening to that. It, I think what, what we're missing here is, and we talked, I mean, Dylan talked about this, and them too, is like, they want you to have something that is for sure. Right. They want you to have something that safe is zone. promised, the safe zone. Right. Oh, you're going to start a business out of zero? Right. That's not safe. What about mm -hmm. tomorrow? What if it doesn't work? Yeah. What if it doesn't? That's all worries. That that's the self doubt, and that's just 
that's just uh, what was that saying? When you feel like it is not gonna work, when you feel insecure, when you feel that butterfly in your stomach, that's yeah. when you just gotta jump, jump, mm-hmm. just start, just start, just throw yourself in the deep end. I promise you, you will end up swimming. Right. Unless big you risk, don't drown. Big reward. <laughs> Yeah, unless you don't drop. Yeah. Then, <laughs> then we're but, fucked. But <laughs> it's gonna teach you're on your own bed now. <laughs> I mean, then the, call the lifeguard. Lifeguard. <laughs> I didn't tell you to jump on, boy. It's going to teach you how to try swim. It. And also, if you can't swim, it's going to teach you humility. Help. Help. It's okay yeah, to ask for, for help. help. Ooh. Hey, it's my okay God. My, oh, that's how I that got this far, bro, because I asked for help. No, nah, jeez. For But everybody Sheesh. watching that's listening right now, this is going to be that. This is going to be that message if you're watching or hearing that. Yes. Why ask for help? Yeah. I don't want to ask for help. Why should I ask for yeah. help? I could do this on my own. I'm right. self-made. Mm. Mm. And I've said yeah. that I've said that on the podcast before. I've said that on a on a, a TikToks podcast that we had just him and I. Uh-huh. It's okay to ask for help, dude. Yeah. It's okay to ask for help. Uh you know, we've been conditioned by this generation not to ask for help to do it by yourself and this and that. And it seems weak to ask for help, but mm. it's okay, dude. Like it's really okay. And it all comes down to what I remember back in high school. Um, I had this one teacher. Um, I forgot. I forgot his name. He didn't let us copy off of anyone. Nothing. Yeah. Obviously, a straight, you know, square <coughs> yeah. teacher. Yeah. And I had this other teacher. He's square teacher. He's He's square. Square. Like, <laughs> well, you square if you ain't copy him. Bro. <laughs> Let's not lower. He was like, you ain't copy yeah. no one else's work. <laughs> straight. Um, he was a straight square. And I, and I say square because this he other was teacher. He was third. Um, if you had, a, if you had a question, if you had, if you were stuck on a problem, you can go. With another student and ask for help. Yeah. He won't give you the answer, but he'll help you to get the answer. Uh, mm. And that's when I was like, "There you go. That's it." Yeah. You know, life is like that. If yeah. you don't know anything, it's okay to go ask your partner. Yeah. You'll go ask your partner yeah. for help, or go yeah. ask someone else for. They're not going to give you the answer straight up, but they're going to walk you through lead it, you it, lead you to get the answer. So let's get to the better question. Yeah. Who do you get help from? Man, God. Mm. God. So my God is is always my active, instantaneous spirit inside. So when God says, "Hey, ask that man, like, yo, how how come I'm building the composites on like on my 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 silk screen? Like, it's it's y- yoking up. Like, ask him, like, how do I resist that? What do I need to do? Is like, do I need to lower my my mesh count on the screen? Well, I'm speaking on some like, <laughs> it just but, bro, that's just a yeah, going over like, like, my fucking head. Yeah, it's going yeah. right now. <laughs> oh yeah, but, no, no, we don't feel that. <laughs> but like sometimes, like your intuition and this guy's like, yo, just ask, like just ask that person. That's I feel like he would know. And you know, ask, seek, and knock. It will give you the keys and the answers, right? Like there you it's go. and and God requires us to become children. Like rem- reminds us as we get so macho, so adult, like you know. Mm-hmm. Um, it's God reminds you, yo, in order to inherit the kingdom of God, you must be children like, like children. And what do children do? Dad, can you help me? Just, just, uh, Mom, can you help me? Just, uh, like, help. Can you help me? You know? Can we help? At the end of the day, they're going to get that help, you yeah. know? So that's, um, that's one of those things, dude, where us as adults, how we've talked about in the last two weeks, we've been so conditioned. Yeah. I don't care if you feel like shit. Don't even cry. Don't even complain. Don't, yeah. even, don't even talk about your yeah. emotions. Yeah. Because if you talk about your emotions, then you're not valid anymore. Then you're not powerful. Mm. And society brought us all to that, right? right? But now the most powerful thing, one of the most powerful things that we have personally is the power of our voice. Yeah. Talk talk, and say what you feel. Yeah. And everything around you will be what, what it has to be. Right. You're going to attract the right people. Right, right now, you may not have the right people around you because they're saying other things in your ear. Yeah. But promise you, once they leave because you're outgrowing that and outgrowing that phase, yeah. then the right people come. Right. And and that comes with believing in something bigger than you and believing and trusting in something that is not physically there just yet. Yeah. And you got to believe in it. That's and, called faith. Yes, sir. Faith. Mm-hmm. And it's called faith. And faith. it's it and, and that's what it is. Having faith and believing in something blindly when you have no idea exactly what it may be. Right. But I, you're just believing in this idea. I told my dad once. My dad is very well, my parents are very religious. Mm-hmm. He'll um, read you the Bible. My dad my dad has spoken to him <laughs> all about religion. <laughs> you know, in this, in this scripture. Um, sat him down. Like, yeah, that was I like, told oh, I shit. told my dad once, I was like, bro, um and I'm very close to my dad. And I t- I talked to him like a Obviously, I respect him, but I talk to him like like a homie. Yeah, I'm like bro, like hey, um, 
How do I know God exists? Like, yeah, that's a good question. I I, can't, I don't see him or anything. Yeah. He's like, and he was just like he was quiet. My dad's my dad's very energetic. He's uh, but he was just quiet and serious that one day. And he was like, when you go outside and you feel the wind, do you see it? Mm-hmm. I'm like, no. He's like, but you, you feel it, and you know it's there. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh, wow. yeah. That for once I was like, I respect it. Yeah. I'm a fucking for, god. For damn. once, I respect you. <laughs> for once, like, okay, it makes sense. It makes clear sense. I don't nah, see it. Nah, it's just my, my dad is um my dad's very childlike. Um, my dad is very energetic. He's very you know smiling all the time. But yeah. this one time, I saw him very wise and serious, and I was right. like, damn. Yeah, damn, think, and that that makes so much sense. Yeah, you're just it's like, clear, bro. Yeah, it's it, facts. It's clear. The message that everybody's gonna get right now is how you said. When you keep having that reassurance and that sign yeah. that, hey, this is your calling, this yeah. is where you need to be, right? it's time to take off the shades, it's time to open up the blinds, look at the right, <laughs> <laughs> look at look at what's in front of you and what's been given to you. Yeah. But I tell everybody, because everybody's always with the, man, you know what, I wasn't ready, bro. Yeah. Ah, man, that one time, I, I know I should have done it, but I didn't. Yeah. You weren't ready. Right. It's not that you could have done it. It's just you know you shouldn't have done it, yeah. even though you really wanted to. But that where your body and your mind and your in, in your life where it was at that moment was not ready to withstand what's ready to come. Because when you go into entrepreneurship, when you go into your calling, yeah, people think you going into your your passion and your calling, it's gonna be all fucking rainbows, smooth, smooth, yeah. smooth yeah. sailing. Right. It's not that. There's gonna be so much <laughs> wave, so much emotion, what so did, many um, downfalls. Test. What, what did what did Johnny say? Uh, a, a storm made a great sailor, or something. Mm. A great storm made a great sailor, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, great storm made a great sailor, something like that. Yeah, but it, it's, it's just, gonna require a test. It's gonna mm-hmm. require a test, ongoing test, pop up tests, quizzes, perseverance, everything. It's gonna give you. We're a good testimony to this, right? Your journey will end your passion and your gift and and your. And what you feel like should be your life, it's going to give you every reason first to quit. Right. It's going to give you everything that, hey, dude, this is not working out. Yeah. This is not the payback. This is yeah. You're wasting your time. You're wasting your money. You're wasting your energy. And that's the devil talking, honestly. And then you get that. <laughs> Here you go. You get that. Here's your sign. Yeah. Here you go. Yeah. Keep going. I'm proud of you. Keep going. This is God. This is the power of hire. The power above giving you a sign that, hey, you're doing really good. I see your work. Let me just give you this little lifeline. Right. Let me give you the lifeline so you can breathe a little bit now. Yeah. And you can keep going. Yeah. And, bro, it's crazy. We're, there's always there's room for everybody to eat, dog. Hey, guys. Right, so Amen. So Amen we just that. came back from this break, man. And for you guys that are tuning in and listening still, thank you so much for... For staying this long with us, I know yeah. taking an hour and a half out of your day, sometimes it becomes a lot, but we're going to give you these gems. And yeah, we have to change people's lives. We're here, man. This is why we're here. So there is a personal event, right, that I think what's going to relate to a lot of people was things happen for the reason, and you're at the right place at the right time for a reason. Serendipity. And I'm trying to figure this out, man, because yeah. yesterday we went we went to, to the gym. We've been trying to stay consistent, working our personal personal yeah. selves, right? Yeah, personal development. And we were just sitting there, bro, in the sauna, chilling already. And then the girl next to me started crying. Dang. And we didn't, like, we didn't bother, bro. Like, we're just uh, like, man, she's just crying. What the yeah. fuck? Like, you know, everybody got their own theme. We have, everyone had their ear, everphones on, like. No, everybody's minding their own business, bro. <coughs> and um, trying to be respectful, but being pathetic at the same time. Correct. Yeah. So... I didn't turn off my headphones until she let out a bigger cry. Mm-hmm. And then she was on a phone call with her mom from what I got out of it. Ooh. And then she ended up leaving probably like two, three minutes later. And one of the persons that was in there with us, so this is this was the room. It was Dylan in the corner, me on this side. There was another female, a guy, and then the girl crying. So when the girl left, it was just us four. The girl that was listening, she didn't have no headphones. She was like, man, that's tough. What are you talking about? Like, what happened? We don't even know what happened. We think it's like a boyfriend situation or some situation that's not to the extremity I'm about to say. And she's like, she got a message from her sister that the girl that was sitting next to us, to me, that her boyfriend committed suicide. What? And they send her a 
message saying it's your fault. What? And that we're just terrible. like, we're just like, whoa. That was horrible, bro. Yeah. So sorry to be a Debbie Downer, but like these type of things, and and it hits home. Because, we gotta raise these topics up. Yeah, it hits home because this is the thing, right? We're here to try to help people as much as we can and give that pe- give. Give these people that feel like they got no backup, they got nobody left to fight with them. Yeah. It's like, hey, we're here with you. Right. You're not alone. We're riding with you. You're not alone. alone. You're never going to be alone. And it hits home because this person here felt like there was nothing left. Nothing left. And what I said, there was the girl that was there with us was like, man, I would have never imagined a guy to do this. And I was like, man, do you know guys, men in our society, in our time, have the highest rate to commit suicide what? because we're the ones that don't ask for help. Wow. We're the ones that feel like nobody can help us in this situation. Like yeah. it's us against the world. Yeah. When it's really not, it's you against the world, but you have a whole community and people that love you behind you. Yeah. And what I said after that was, I hope God saves his soul. Yeah. And I hope it brings him to, to the light that he was looking for. But I hope that girl, me and Dylan were saying, I hope that girl finds a peace that it wasn't your fault. Exactly. You know? It wasn't your fault that this happened. It was just, this is something that he was fighting and couldn't win. Yeah, I, I honestly, right. I, I took that very personal and I told him before, and I've, I've said on the podcast before, I've personally gone through that. And thankfully, by the will of God, I've survived. And I was just like, dude, I survived that guy didn't, you know, and it hit me, it hit me very, very bad. And I was just quiet the whole time we were in, inside the sauna. And yeah, I was just it, like thinking about it, like, why, why am I here? And he wasn't, you know, bro, it was like, I would, I would be very, I, I <clears> love <throat> being very transparent here. And especially with you, man, cause you're my guy. I was up to like four in the morning crying dog. Cause Dang. I was just like, how he said, why him? Why? That could have been me. Yeah. But I survived. Right. But I kept going. Yeah. Why did I feel like I have this this backup and why did he didn't? Yeah. Right? But to to shed light, man, and if that if you land in this video, that person, that girl that was sitting to us, man, I pray for you. I love you. Amen. You're loved. You know, it's not your fault. Just Facts. keep going. You know, just keep praying and keep believing. God is with you. Um, God is with you. God is with all of us, man. And yeah. and this is not like I don't I don't want people to take take this like, oh, you gotta believe. No, nah, man. I whatever you believe in, just believe there's a higher power. Yeah. Whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Believe there's something bigger than you and there's something that will lead you. And remember that the reason why you're in the position you're in is because somebody higher power than you wanted you to be there because you're gonna learn something. Yeah. You're gonna take a purpose out of it. Take a purpose out of it. So, man, do you this week, ah, man, this is a word I've been on, bro. It's called being merciful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mercy. That's a great word, man. It's what what word. do you take from that, man? Because before I get into this, <laughs> yeah. I, I want to I learn from you. You know, we always hear the word grace yes. and mercy. Yes. But do we ever take the time to actually study what it actually means? <sighs> Not really, honestly. No. We just hear it and it sounds good, so I'm going to say it. It sounds good. You know, it's a positive thing, but you know yeah. what it means, though? It means undeserving. Even though you don't deserve this, but I'm going to love you anyways. Mm. That's what grace is. So grace means like we're going to have enemies. People will wrong us. But when they're, imagine when they're in a state of hunger, in a state of thirst, will you still give them a, a, a cup of water, a drink? Will you still feed them? That's grace. Even though you wronged me, you say you talk bad against me, you know what I'm saying? Say you left, you dished me. Say you uh, just just root, spread a room, you know, it's like false. Yeah. You accuse my, you know, my character, who I am, and just did me wrong. Yeah. I'm still going to feed you anyways. Yeah. Because you know what? Like God, we wrong against God every day. We every sin day. against God every day, but yeah. yet he forgives us and gives us grace. So yet, and it's merciful. if we expect God to give us, you know, forgive us, may we forgive our, our those who sin against us, who did us wrong. I think this week I've been telling him, man. He's been merciful on me. Yeah. He's he's had mercy, bro. Yep. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe someone correct me. But I I heard it from Steve Harvey. It's like mercy is when you don't get what you deserve. Right. Because God showed you 
Right, greater love, greater like, love, unconditional love. Yeah. And and let's take it. Let's take this to the step further, man. Like you could have done so much wrong in your life, and you knew you deserved to get this punishment, and then you never got it. And you went, "Damn, bro! Like, why did I get so lucky? It's not luck. It's, mm-hmm. it's God blessing you, bro. <laughs> blessing. He, you. he had mercy. And that on humbles you. you. Yeah, man. It's it's we we're all young, man. We we all been through the young stages where we've done so much so much wrong. We gone out with our homies. We've drank. We've we've done drugs. We've done this. We've done that. Party yeah. with the wrong people. Been at the wrong place at the wrong time. Some way, somehow, we made it home. But the person over there never made it. That's uh, yeah. Why did we make it and he didn't? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was in the same place at the same time doing right. the same thing. Why did I make it? Right. And there's so much thing out there, bro. That that's so like so much self development, and. It, and my thing is, like, you, I know you're tired. I know you want to give up most of the time. But just keep going. Yeah. Like, the, the, the clouds do not stay over your head forever. Right. They may stay a little longer than The wanted. sunshine after the rain, the rain, you know. It's rainbows after this rain, you know. Man, we, and we've seen the, the other side of the rainbow. Right. Yeah. Crazy, Yesterday bro. Yesterday was a rainbow, bro. Yeah, no man. facts, bro. We're driving no home from, we're driving, we're driving back from San Diego, and we just seen a rainbow. And we're like, wait. It's that, beauty. That's, that's it's the beauty. end. I have, a, I have a picture of yeah, it. Yeah, we're like. End to the end. Bro, from yeah, end to end, we saw it. We're like, we're no like, fucking way. Wait, yeah. what is this? You know, it's a horizon, and you see how it goes above, you know, from, east, from west to east, east to west. So let me ask you this question, man. At what point of your life did you have to depend on faith and have to depend on a higher power? It means both. Like, higher power and faith is, like, looking within and looking above and, and being confident in the unseen. And what faith, what I learned this morning, I was reading this book called The Four Agreements, is like faith is meaning believing unconditionally. That means through whatever condition comes in your way, you still stick to the truth, right? And faith is like the confidence and assurance of the unseen. So like say your guy, he wanted like this this nice uh, navy blue suede couch with the mustard yellow. Like he had that vision before it became here. It was a vision. It was unseen, you know? And, like, he's saying, like, yo, how do I know God is real if I don't see him? Well, you ever step outside and feel the wind? Do you ever see the wind? And let me ask you, have you seen your own spirit? Never. What does that spirit look like? It's within, right? It's beyond uh, physical. It's called the quantum physics. Like, it's metaphysical. That means beyond tangible. Uh, So let me, but to the the question is, when did you have to depend on faith? Depend on faith. When was your toughest moment in life uh, that you had to get out? That you feel like there was no out? You know, the, the, the most toughest thing I've ever been to in my life is when um when my dad died in 2010, and I'm visiting his funeral in South Carolina, and then I get a phone call by my mom that the house got robbed. Everything is a mess, and she's scared for her life. My house got stripped. That means... The twenty thousand dollars I was, you know, at that time I was, I like in cash that I was trapped for, gone. My studio, my jewelry, everything gone. And um, that was the most toughest moment in my life, because like I'm already here for my dad's funeral, and then my house get robbed, everything stripped away from me. It's basically everything took it away from me, right? And then my mom is in California while I'm in South Carolina, scared for her life. She's by herself in the hood. Anything can happen to her. What can I do? Um, and I'm on the phone with my guy named Brox, Ernie, you know, rest in peace. But uh, he was the one who spoke to me. He was like, yo, you know what I'm saying? Right now is the time of testing. You know, you, either you could pass this test or you could fail this test. Either you go six feet under or you could rise above it. You know, God is testing you right now. And um, um, I just learned that do I want to go in the route of of like it's we're in a spiritual warfare yeah. where like all right do i want to kill whoever did this to me you know because i'm gonna find out who did it and i and i got hitters like who willing to kill for me i don't even got to do it it's just like people just willing you know from the streets like you got hitters but um am i gonna rise above this you know what is twenty thousand dollars cash compared to you can make that in one day the rest of your life right because you can get so what if I'm I'm hit for like a murder charge now, 
you know, I'm I'm a conspiracy but murder yeah. charge. But it's just like um what is this amount of money compared to the rest of my life? Right. How you set time. We can't get time back. We can't get so it back. So if you make this wrong decision now and then you're in for X amount of time, how do you get that time back? Every – I've personally never been through it. I've only known a couple people that have ever been inside the system. And if you look at documentaries, if you look at – other videos that's so much out there. What do they always say? I wish I could take that time back with my right. kids, with my family. Yeah, yeah. you know what? Where was I gonna be if I if I would have done this? You right. even you you hear these like these athletes that get accused wrongly accused, and they're they're locked up for X amount of time. And if they could take ten years back, they would have been in the league. Yeah, which they yeah. worked so hard for, and they got taken so much away from <laughs> yep. them. Now what do they do? Yeah, ten years later, you're not fit. Your time has passed. Yeah. What do you do now? Man, while everybody has a time right now, the, the time is always now. You know why they call it the presence? Because mm. it's a present to be present. Don't live in the like, past. It's a gift. It's a gift to be present. And what I learned from, e- um, um, uh, what's his name? Egon Tolley. Eric, uh, the, the author of The Power of Now. His last name is Tolley. So f- what he state was like the past and the future is not even real. Yeah. It does because why? Because it doesn't even exist. Yeah. It's not here with you right now. All you have is right here and right now. And while you have this time right here and right now, you can make the decision to rise above or be below. And it's a test, right? And we're in a spiritual warfare between good and evil, and it's both within us. You know, we can either. And this is not to sound religious or anything, but the Satan in us, the devil in us, wants his mission. His mission statement is to kill, steal, and destroy. Mm-hmm. Literally, that's his mission statement. It's in John 10 10. I'm not, not. I bring I was about, about to say John 10 10. Yes. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I'm about, I'm about <laughs> to say you know about that. <laughs> like, so whenever I bring about the Bible, it's not to be religious. It's just, that's just factual, you know? And God is here to, for us to live life to the full freedom, right? Yeah. It sets us free. So, like, to kill, steal, and destroy, kill, you know, your dreams, destroy, like, yeah, like, just kill you, you know? So anybody who's going on there, they feel alone, they feel like that this is the last day, you know what I'm saying? Like, understand, that's not you. Yeah. That's the Satan talking in you. Mm-hmm. And and will you believe that? Because, you know, what the, another AKA and they, a nickname for, for Satan? The father of lies. The father of lies, yes. The father lies. He's lying to you. He's just trying to manipulate you. And his favorite playground is in your head, in your mind, because he plays with it. He plays tricks, right? So anybody on their last, like, feeling like they give, like, this is it, you know what I'm saying? They feel like their life is worthless, is is better off dead than, than living. Knowing that that's a lie. Satan trying to lie to you because God has a purpose for you. And God chose you. But you know what's crazy? We don't choose ourselves. And you know what? As powerful as God is and mighty God is, you know what's one power he doesn't have control over? What do you think that is? You said God? Huh? You said God? You said God. Yeah, yeah, God. He has all the power and might in, 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 might in his universe. But your what's choice. one thing he can't control? Your choice. Your, your willpower. Cho- yeah, you're about to say your will. Your willpower. Your yeah. will. And that's why they call it willpower. Mm-hmm. So I encourage everybody who's tuning in and listening, like activate your willpower and rise above because you have a choice. You have a conscious decision to rise above or be below. When I was at my worst, my dad got, my dad died, my house got stripped, everything gone. I have the choice to either go below or rise above. And it was a test. Just understand there's a test and there's a temptation. I'm tempted to hurt myself and kill myself, but I'm or I'm tested to rise above it, persevere. Because yeah. perseverance, you have to persevere through any hard adversity or storms. As sunny as these days are in LA, as rainy as it is, you see right now outside. Yeah. Right? So you have to be able to, per- and it was crazy wind. Last night was woof, doors like we let the, open, wind, the wind open. Next thing you hear the door, it goes boom. If we think it's a ghost, we can get scared, right? We could fr- fr- uh freak out yeah but same thing with peter when he walked on water and once the wind started woof, he got scared and started drowning yeah he said he's yeah and he guess what, what was jesus response as he picked him up out of the deep end you have little faith, faith yeah 
So whenever the time is going to test us, it's not, it's not, ain't no dodging it. It's just, this is part of your testimony. So when time is testing you and when it gets windy and it's in it, the big storm is coming, thunder and the big waves crashing, it sounds scary, but where's your faith? Is your faith still firm, is it like? anchored in Christ that, to persevere and build that character? And now you're ready for success. And, and it's always, who do you have around you? Because if we're, if we're in the wrong room, this type of conversation doesn't help out other people that are not ready. Yeah. It's like, man, why are you talking about that, bro? Why are you, why are you even saying that? Da, 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 da. This doesn't exist. Oh, that's bullshit. All you got to do is just work hard. Nah, yeah. bro, sometimes working hard will still won't pay off. Right. Sometimes you work so hard for everything you've been wanting, and at the end of the day, it still doesn't happen. Yeah. Then what do you do? What do you, what do you depend on? You can't yeah. depend on nobody, bro. Right. As much as I say or somebody says, bro, I got you, I, you, I got your back. Yeah. You got you. Yeah. Ain't no one can grab you. Have you your back. God coming. got you. Yeah, you God alone. got you. You, God, you were God. That's that's my that's my fucking bro right there. That's that's my ride or die and right I, there. Yeah, I see. And it. as much as I can say, I got your back. I, I'm here for you. Yeah. At the end of the day, he knows his own problems. Mm -hmm. That's his life. He knows himself yeah. better than I. I'll, know I'll put life. it. I'll put it in perspective. Yesterday, we were supposed to go on TikTok live. Man, just go on live together. Mm -hmm. Enjoy a Friday night. Yeah. But what happened earlier in that day weighed heavy on me, and instead, and I just told y'all, I just want to go to sleep. I felt, I felt that vibe. I'm yeah, like, like, I was I, gonna hit him up yeah. with, like, I just want to go home. I just want to go to sleep. I want to, mm. I want to be by myself because being by myself, I will learn more about me, right. and I get to be vulnerable by myself. But me being vulnerable and going through my mental health allows me to reset. So when I cry and when, when, when I'm in my deep state of mind of loneliness. It's just my body releasing everything I've been building up. Yeah. So when I come up and I wake up the next day, I'm ready to rock. Yeah. I ain't missing a beat. You released. I released everything I needed to. Yeah. And someone that says they're they're suffering from mental health, man, we're just asking for help. Right. I'm seeing. I'm trying to see who's willing to come and help, or just willing to come and, hey, I'll be here for you. Yeah. I don't. I don't expect Dylan to get me out of this situation. Yeah. I don't expect Jose to get me out of the situation. I don't expect nobody to get me out of the situation. I got to get myself out of the situation. It's you. But it if, starts with you. But if you leave me right now, just know when I come out of here, you're not allowed back into my life because you left me when I needed you the most. Uh, you left me when I wasn't anything or what, when I wasn't at my fullest potential. Yeah. So why do you deserve to be when I'm at my best? Right. You can't. You're not allowed, bro. Yeah. And, and whether you did something for me be, before or back then, whether you were that person for me, but you left me now... I can't bring you no more. Yeah. Because now who do I got? Right. I only got me. And then I only got God. Yeah. That's it, bro. Yeah. My lonely night yesterday, uh, who was there with me? Just me and God. Yeah. It's me believing. Bro, got on my, my, my knees, bro. Just hands up, bro. Just I believe in you. I thank you. I appreciate you. Let's keep going. Keep, keep bringing me the blessing. Yeah. And let's keep, like, we're driving, <clears throat> I think, like, at 11... 11 o'clock at night the other day, bro. It's fucking 45 degrees outside. Yeah. yeah it's and cold. we're driving to go to the gym so late. Put the window down, bro. Freezing cold. I just look outside. And I'm just like, thank you. Just take that whole thing in, bro. I wanted to feel. I didn't see it, but I felt it. Yeah. I didn't I didn't see God, but I felt him. Yeah. I didn't see the faith, but I felt it. Yeah. I didn't see the perseverance and I didn't see the power. But I just felt to come in. Yeah. So when we got there, I said, "Let's rock." Yep. And that's what we all need, bro. We just need that little, that little feeling. Yeah. You're gonna walk. We can walk outside, look up, feel the water hit us, feel the cold hit us, and just know you felt something. Compared to someone that is not here today, could not feel this, or the yeah. ones that are locked in the hospital that can't feel this that yeah. we're feeling. Yep. The ones that can't walk, the ones that can't feel, the ones that can't see, the ones that can't hear, the ones, the ones that don't have the voice. Well, we can't even step outside their door because they they in the cell, in the tank, in the box. So what are we now? We are the voice. Yeah. We yeah. are the voice for those people that never had it. We are the voice for the people that didn't have the courage and the power and the reassurance that you have it. The voice to give them hope. We are that. Yeah. Kevin Gates says, we're him. I'm him. Yeah. Take me how you how I am. Love me or hate me. That's still fine, bro. I don't, I need I only need the the assurance of a couple people in my life. Yeah. That's my kids. Mm -hmm. I, 
that's that's God, man. Yeah. And maybe my mom doesn't agree with this. My dad doesn't, agree, but they know they love me. They accept me. You don't gotta see my vision, but you gotta believe that I believe in. You gotta trust me that I do this. Yeah. You don't gotta believe in my vision, bro. Nobody, nobody yeah. has to believe in my vision. As long see, as I trust myself and I see this, the vision was given not to your parents. Mm, it wasn't it was given, given to, to your me. homie. It was given to your dad. It was yeah. it was given to you. You said it earlier. Why why do you keep envisioning being a millionaire and being successful? It's for a reason. Yeah, it's itching at you. It's yeah. knocking at your door. Sometimes, ah, fuck! I heard this this <laughs> week. Man, I love yeah. TikTok, bro, because <laughs> you hear so much shit. And it was just sometimes the black sheep of the family is the one that's misunderstood. I'm that one, bro. And being misunderstood leads up to being being the most proud of when it pays off. Right. Because you, you did everything that no one else thought that you could do right. and didn't want to do, and you did it, and they condemned you for it. But now yeah. that it paid off, yeah. congratulations. Wow. I don't blame you. I don't yeah. blame you for not believing in me and being mad at me and being you're gone in this. Yeah. Yes, but I just yeah. hope you know that I love you so much that I'm doing this for you and I'm sacrificing myself yeah. for the greater good of us. Right. Yes, sir. Yeah. And maybe yeah. not oh, right man. now. It's, that's but breaking it's a generational curse. Hell yeah, bro. We, we, you know ain't, we ain't living in this no more, bro. Yeah. Like, that's what, how I, can we I, break I, out of it? I feel like that's what him and I, him and I have in common, bro. Um, for, my, for my family, I feel like I'm the only one that has that, you know, power to make it, bro. That the chosen one to make it, obviously. Yeah. I like um, that you said that chosen one. Yeah. Chosen one. I got something the to say. Qualified about that. one. Because yeah. we said this before. God doesn't choose, He qualifies. Mm. You know? Shout yeah. out Mike and, um, Barron, bro. There you go. Yeah. Exactly. God doesn't choose. That. Man. He qualifies. He qualifies, exactly. bro. And it's like my my younger sister, she's twenty. She has a family. She has a kid, everything. My older brother, he has a family. He's struggling with this stuff right now. And I feel like the only one that can get family out of their struggles the family out of you know the in other words the poor life that we've had is me yeah i think it, i think we and can all agree i think jose too is this the one that suffers the most is the one that's gonna climb out of it and gonna help everybody else yeah because you have more deeper understanding now. yeah we have more deeper scars bro. we have scars to talk about yeah what we've been through what scars we've been for feeling. life bro. Scars, scars for life only. man <laughs> i can't tell you about life without these scars man let me tell you about where this comes from where all yeah. this comes from we have so many days and nights and, and weeks and months where we're, we feel like we're just alone yeah. and i said this the other day bro like i spent the last couple months saying man why haven't i gotten that deal why haven't I gotten that fame? Why haven't I gotten these numbers that these people have and I know I'm better? And then it turned into, can you appreciate where you're at right now? Yeah. Can you be thankful for where you're at right now? Have you asked <coughs> Have you asked for it? Yeah. And have you been patient for it? Yeah. Man, I got a lot to share about that right there. Man, Let's go. go ahead, Look, man. It's a, it's a scripture in Luke, um, Luke 16.10. It says, those who are entrusted with very little will be trusted with very much. So you, so you got to be, you got to handle and be able to manage with very little before I even trust you with very much. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, um, yeah, bro, that, that that's, that's where I'm at right now. You know, just like being better managers. Yeah. You know, like. Being, being the best manager of your own self. Right. I can't. I can't worry about other people, man. I'm 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 sorry I can't worry about you, but I'm too busy working on me yeah, right now. Yeah, it's like because, you know, the second greatest love besides God is yourself. Mm -hmm. Because you love yourself as great as you love your neighbors, you know, like you got to love yourself in order to love your neighbors. Yeah. I can't show you love if I don't love myself, bro. Yeah. And if I'm telling you I love you without really loving myself, then why am I lying to you? That's yeah. love. That's why, love. why? Why am I trying to just make you feel better for that moment? Because I know when things come down, bro. Like I'm not gonna second guess it. <laughs> like if I love you, I'll do anything for you. If I love you, I will give myself for you. I will take that bullet for you. I will put myself through hell just to make you happy. Yes, yeah. if I love you. Right. But if I don't love you, I ain't gonna do that. So d stop asking yourself, why doesn't he love me? Why doesn't he do this for me? Mm. Ask ask that question. Why? Yeah. And, yeah. and it's it's that que it's the question. Why don't you do this? What why does it cause you to do this? Yeah. It's just asking. 
asking you shall receive. Right. If you ask, you shall receive. At the end of the day, yep. like you have not because you ask not. Uh, Steve yeah. Harvey said it. You have yeah. you have not because you ask not. Yeah. So if you have if you haven't asked to have a better life and to be more sane and be healthy and and have more of a purpose, finding yeah. your purpose, how can God give you that without even? Yeah. Can't. Well, he was saying earlier, right? You know, being a chosen one, right? Being chosen. See, God chooses us, but we don't even choose ourselves. Some yeah. of us don't even choose our own self. Yeah, facts. And 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 the greatest, like I said earlier, like uh, control that that God doesn't have is your own willpower. So is it in your will to even choose yourself? And um, you know, choosing means like, yo, mediocrity and greatness is just a choice. Yeah. Only difference is a choice. Mm -hmm. Mediocrity sound like this. Oh yeah, I'm cool with eighty thousand dollars a year. I'm cool with making, you know, six figures a year or greatness is like, yo, I want a million. I, I'm, I deserve, I'm a million dollars a month I can get in living within my purpose, something I love figures, and passion. Six figures a year. What are you talking about? Six figures a month. Let's talk right. about this running. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's, it's just a choice and, and it's so common society where I'm cool with, I'll be fine with, yo, what you mean you'll be fine with? Or what about, oh, I'll be great with, I'm blessed with. You know, so I feel like we should be more aware of how we self-talk within ourselves, our dialogue, yeah. because our inner our inner conversation, right? Like how how powerful is that? Because you could say, keep. I hear friends around me, and I was victim of it. Like, oh, I'm dumb. Oh, I'm stupid. I should have. You know. You know. We. It's how you talk to yourself. You know, because our our words are are powerful. You know, as we're the only species on this planet who are gifted. The power of conversation, the power of talk, like to, to even talk, communicate. So communicating with ourselves, we we must be very like conscious of either we pouring, we speaking blessings or we're casting out spells. Mm. Spells like, oh, I can't. I'm a bad singer. I'm a bad whatever it is. You know, once you you really say that, because what you say, it, it derives from what's stored in your heart. And then you, you tend just to believe in that, you know. So, um, self dialogue, man. I, I just want to you know, encourage everybody to like, you know, speak uh, greatness into yourself and choose your own self because God is choosing you. He has a plans for you, but it's up to you to even choose it. Yeah. Let's let's get this, you know, last bit of um, Who, who's pump that? of faith and what's that? A uh, guy that said it? it's like fuel. I'm not a fighter, but I'm a lover. But if you can't fight for what you love, then what are you doing? There you go. Jakarta said it too. He was hey. like, man, <laughs> if, I, if we ain't fighting for this love, then what are we doing? Yeah. Shout out to Jakarta, man. Go, go we love you, in, Jakarta. Go we tune into that mixtape, dog. That shit's a banger. You just don't stand for anything. You fall for anything. You know, you don't stand for something. You still fall for anything. Yes, sir. There you go. And you guys had something we wanted to tag. What's up? What, 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 um, what were we talking about? We were, we were talking earlier, bro. You were talking about opportunities. Yeah. And um, there's no such thing as luck. No such thing as luck. No, it's Humble, Humble had to say something about opportunities. Yeah. Because um, go hey for man, it, go for like, it. Take, take, like, take, I, take the take reins, it. bro. Take the reins. It's all out there, right? It's all, you walk outside, there's an opportunity. We live in LA or anywhere, you know, there's an opportunity to even DM your favorite artist or whoever it is, A&R manager, right? But it's the preparation because luck is preparation meets opportunity. So while the opportunity arrives, were you prepared for it? Were you equipped for it? Did you persevere? Did you have a testimony? Do you have a whole history? Yeah. Right. Something I want to share too is about the Chinese bamboo tree, right? The analogies of a Chinese bamboo tree. So for for the people that don't know, mm -hmm. what is your ethnicity? I'm Cambodian. Cambodian. Yeah, uh, and I'm partial Chinese, speaking on Chinese. Like my I have grandma. A, I have a, I have a Cambodian friend. He's pretty chill. Yeah, 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 like in Long Beach is very common. Like I got I got two now. I got two Cambodian friends. <laughs> And my ethnicity, we are very, like, scarce, um, like, limited, almost, like, uh, depleted, you know, ethnicity because there was a genocide in our country in 1974. Yeah. But thank God I'm, I'm one of the, the small percentage that still exists. Uh, first generation American. And, um, you know, I carry that on with a purpose. But um, the Chinese bamboo tree, you, you mind if I share with you guys the analogy of it? Go for it. Right? We would love to hear this. Well, we would love to hear this. So, like, you see how tall these bamboo trees are, how strong they are, right? So did you know 
with a Chinese bamboo tree, the first year, it doesn't even lift off the ground. When you plant the seed, it barely, barely even lift off the ground. The second year, same thing. It's still stuck. Like nothing risen off the ground. Third year, nothing. Fourth year, you think something's coming, still nothing. But on the fifth year, it rises up to 80 to 90 feet tall within five to six weeks. So that means a month and a quarter and a month and a half, it just boosted to 80, 90 feet tall after the fifth year. And you know why? Because so some people start to be discouraged because they don't see results. They don't see nothing rising. But the whole time it was being strongly rooted underground, building its foundation. So, right, same thing with me. Like, I'm, I thank God I, I'm able to pay all my bills. I make my living. I, I can help take care of my mom. I can retire her. That sounds great and all, but I want to scale, like skyrocketing, you know, like 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 I had a breakthrough. And I'm that's every day I'm working towards my breakthrough. And before God even blesses me with that breakthrough, you know, I'm leaning on towards my five years mark now because I started in June 2018. You know, now it's February, yeah. end of February 2023. yeah. yeah. By June, it'll be the fifth year mark. But I strongly believe with that Chinese uh, teaching, the, 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 par- the proverb, the analogy, on the fifth year mark, like how did I scale? Whew. You know, because don't, don't be deceived where like, okay, because my count is now rising way above 20K, whatever it is, it's like, yo, this whole time you've been building a strong deeply rooted foundation. That's what I'm building. My skill sets, my network, my relationships, Facts. my niche, my my vision. Like I now sharpen and, and fine tune my vision and it's a foundation. And once that preparation meets opportunity meets, it just whew, skyrocket. You know um, on the fifth year. Sorry to interrupt my bad, bro. You know what I just I, I, I put into context what you were saying, bro. And you know what I came up with? And you were saying about the root stuff. Sometimes you have to go down instead of up. Exactly. To be fucking shooting up at the yeah. end of the fucking day. Yeah. You know? Sometimes you have to go down, work your way down. Yeah. To get where you want to be up there. Right. And it's holding it down. Let's keep yes. adding to that because it's, people think the work has to be done outside and above. But in reality, the real work within. has to be done inside, within, right. deep down inside. Or in closed doors, you can say, you know, behind the yeah. curtains type of stuff. Yeah. Where the people don't th- see what you're doing down there, right. what and you're going through, what you, all the work you put in. So true definition of who you are. When people see that you're 60 feet high, is you've been working yeah. for five years, this whole journey down there, yeah. that they only see what you've done in six months. Yeah. You know, type of, and I, I fuck with you with that, bro. Yeah, oh, six I love weeks, it, actually. I, within I, six yeah, weeks, yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah. I and, fuck with that shit. But they don't that. know, like, yo, we've been doing this. We've been building the foundation for the last five years. Yeah, that that is consistently. That is, that is the thing. Doing the root work so you can blossom within a matter of minutes, seconds, months, weeks. But you cannot take away everything you you've learned over here. Yeah, to prepare and you for that. To moment. prepare for this, you you will not reach this moment if you don't do the work that needs right. to be done. Yeah, you cannot just expect to say I want to be this and just get gifted this. Yeah. you may get lucky. You may have one blessing. It's like here you go, but just like everything else, when when the foundation isn't there, it breaks and falls right, right. away. If you the build first, your foundation on sand, it's gonna crumble. If yeah. you build your foundation on rock. There is a. It's going to sustain. There's like a video. Uh, there's one of the uh, seminars of Eric Thomas. San Francisco is one of the m- most wealthiest cities in California. Yeah. Expensive. Fact. There's <laughs> million dollar high rise. Yeah. Multi million dollar high rise. Couple was living on top. A marble dropped. And it went from point A to point B when it yeah. should have never done it. Yeah. They deep dive. They kept, boom, they went through the. They went to the root work. Yeah. They found out that that building that they were living in and sitting in was not built on the strongest foundation ever because instead of going 600 feet down or 60 feet down, they went 40 and 50. So what it resembles is 
most of us look for the answers in our relationship, marriage, work, but we don't deep dive in what's really affecting us. We don't deep dive that maybe hey, all the way back then in these years is what really affected me. But I'm going to stop myself here because I don't want to go down that route. Yeah. But later on when this is building and going good, yep. then everything that you didn't deep dive into is starting to come out. Yeah. And now you're ruined. Right. So it's just like, hey, why blame why blame other people for you not doing that deep dive work? So the foundation of your relationship, what does it look like? The foundation of your company, what does it look like? Why does it why did it end so easy? Wow, she didn't fight. What was the foundation? Yeah. Right? <laughs> just what we're talking about, bro. If our foundation is fine and we do the root work and we do everything that needs to be done behind closed doors, when everybody sees us here, is this we did everything here first. Yeah. We didn't, didn't just jump here to here. Right. right. One of the questions that we got on, on our social media to ask you was, if you could do it all over again to yeah. start your brand to, yeah. in your life, would you and what would you do different? Uh, man, uh, that's a good question. If Thank I had, you for you guys that asking that. If I had to redo it? If you had to redo it and if you did, what would you do different? Man, that's that's a, that's a good question. Um, he's like, he's, cause, he's cause like deep, deep in there. It's like, damn, what would I do different? Because I love the journey that it was. Um, okay, here, all right. Here's the thing. If I would have done something different, there was an opportunity in my life in 2011 where um, in Houghton Park, uh, which is in North Long Beach, they were offering a program, after-school program, teaching graphic design, Right. That's something that that I was interested in, but I didn't follow through because mm -hmm. I was like maybe intimidated. But how important it is like to starting a brand like the core ingredient is start with the artwork. Right. So if you can master like Photoshop, graphic design, you your your designs are endless. Yeah. So if it's something I could have done different is I would have went to like some type of like course it, to to do graphic design. Yeah. Um, but. You know, the journey of how I started, like, I mean, I love the the way it was. And and, and it's, it was me just being around the OGs, like these older cats who were like in their 50s, who silk screen, who embroiders, who've been embroidering for 30 years. And I just, I just be with them, ask questions. I just, you know, chill with them. And I, and, and they, they're just willing to teach me because like, yo, it's like, um, they don't mind sharing with a younger, you know, generation. There's room to eat. Yeah, it's hey, like what we said earlier, bro. Everyone eats, bro. There's, yeah, there's so enough room at the table, but don't expect to come to the table and take a plate to go. Yeah, <laughs> to go plate. There you go, there, go, bro. You're you're staying. Seconds. There you go. You're well, staying, bro. Yeah, because there's most people that just come into your life and just it's to take just to get a plate and take it to go yeah. instead of staying. Yeah. So, um, one of the other questions that they ask, I think, is a really good one. When's the last time you cried? Ah oh, man. Yesterday. <laughs> Yesterday, two in the morning. Yeah, that man, was when me. was the last time I cried, <laughs> man? Um oh, God. I can't remember. For me, honestly, it was it was it was yesterday. Yeah. And I know, I, that was I, a big that was a big I felt the vibe from you and you were Sorry. usually I go to his house and I say over at his house and I'm just like I don't want to bring it up, but I was just like I'm hopefully he cancels on me in a way. That way we can have our own alone time and stuff. And I was just in my room chilling. And it hit me because it was on my mind the whole damn day. And, um, yeah, I cried. I cried last night. And I don't know this guy. I don't know what he was going through. I don't know the chick. Nothing at all. But I relate to him a lot because I was obviously in that position before. Yeah. I've tried to hurt myself before. And thank God for some... Miracle, I'm alive right now. Yeah. It hurt. It hurt a lot, bro. Yeah. It really hurt a lot. And yeah. I'm not going to lie. That's why this morning when he picked me up, I was a little sluggish because I couldn't sleep last night just thinking about that. And I was just like, that, that hit hard. That hit home, bro. And yeah. hopefully that, that girl's okay. And we were worried about that girl because we we're saying hopefully she makes it home safe because – there's been times where I'm driving home and I'm not in the right mindset and I'm just like if I if I have the if I have the willpower to just hit this car at 120 miles an hour and not stop 
Who's gonna stop me? Like who's really gonna stop me? No one's gonna stop me, bro. Yeah. You know? So I was just worried all night about the girl, like, I hope she made home safe. Yeah. Yeah. I hope she didn't make this the decision that she had in her mind at that time. Yeah. You know? And that was the last time I cried, honestly. Damn. And I know that question wasn't for me, yeah, but Yeah, yeah. I know. That was that was for really, all of us. It was for all yeah, of us. Bro, I was yeah. I'm a very sensitive person when it comes to stuff like that. I'm yeah. a very sensitive person in general. And it's just like, that, that, hit, that hit hard, bro. And I cried last night, honestly. Yeah. I really cried last night. And that's okay to cry as a man, you know. Last time I cried was um, <clears throat> just thinking the fact of, like, if I could really be practical. Like, when was the last time I cried? Sometimes I had random thoughts of, like, losing my mother. And, like, my, my mom is most dear to me. You know, she's... She's an angel. She's the one who boosted my faith and, you know, centers me towards God and so humble. But whenever I think of, like, you know, my mom not being there, and that's when I I shed a tear. And uh, that's why I do everything in my might today to to bring a better life for her. Like, she come from a life of communism. And I, I, I ask God to this day, like, I just pray that my mom was able to see her grandchild know through me and uh and her biggest dream like i asked my mom one day you know randomly probably like around 2010 i'm like mom what's your dream that first time i asked my mom that like what's your dream my mom was like huh like huh? she's dodging you know my mom's like huh? this, this is your huh? she don't have a dream my like, mama like what would make you most happy what's your dream and my mom had to really sit and think about it for a second like I miss, she said, I miss being the time before um, they got stripped from their homes by the Khmer Rouge um, during the war at the time. But her dream was like when she was most blissful and happy was going outside and picking mangoes outside, you know, picking fruits and vegetables. Out, they had land. Yeah. You know? And so her dream is like just to be able to have a garden to grow some 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 mangoes. And so, yeah, yeah. Um, my dream is, is 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 to build that for her. You know, that's my motive and why I grind so hard every day. You know, and I, I I would cry. You know, just seeing that for her because I ask God. That's my my biggest dream and wish for my mother to, to witness her in her element, watering her garden. What it, it what is your deepest fear? Losing my mother. Speaking of mothers, <laughs> that's my biggest fear. Honestly, like losing my mom. And you know what's crazy about speaking of the deepest fears is like my deepest fear is losing my mom. And there's a scripture that says perfect love has no fear at all. Mm. You know, perfect love drives out fear. Mm. So for me, losing my mom is a fear. So if I love her with perfect love, there's no fear in that. You know, my mom is eternal. Like my mom is with me no matter what. Yeah. You know, physically here or not, my mom is with me. God damn. This has been one of those like podcast episodes that we know just needed to happen, and I hope everybody that's listening in, that's watching in, True. it takes little bits and pieces and just pieces together wherever they need it and the areas they need it from. It was Amen. just it was it was something that night, bro. That um, at Jakarta's um, album release, release. Yeah, I, I had to approach it, bro. Yeah, yeah. back yeah. the back yeah. really, I, for. Yeah. It's crazy how like that's how we met. Yeah, that's how that's how that's how, we, that's, how, that's, how we, that's how we that's how we all met, bro. And the craziest part is sometimes it's not about sending a DM to anybody. It's about the personal interaction that we have. Yeah. We have a, an amazing conversation first. Yeah, and we're like, damn, imagine we put this shit on camera. Yeah, exactly. It's I like just I, I felt that vibe from you, and I'm like, you know what? I, I'm a, I'm gonna come up to homeboy and just speak to him. And I told him he was in the restroom at that time. Yeah. When he came back, I'm like, you know what? Are you gonna talk to this dude, bro? So, obviously, you were a little bit busy doing your stuff. Yeah. I was like, when you're on your free time, I'm like, you know what? I, I approached him. I was like, you know yeah. what, bro? And I had to make an excuse, which was a very good excuse. I fuck with your clothing, bro. Yeah. With your jeans, everything, bro. I was like, you know what? I fuck with your style and this and that. And I told you, I was like, you know what? I fuck with, I fuck with, with the jacket you were had yeah. on that day. I'm like, I love that shit. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, yeah. And you started talking about your brand and this and that. Yeah. And I was like, bro, I'm, I'm glad I approached you that night, bro. Yeah. So and I'm the- glad I told him about you that night. Oh, yeah. I'm glad we put this together this time, Amen. man. And for the people that are still wondering, 
what does God's kingdom mean? Mean? It means like eternal life in heaven. You know, it means the secrets, the keys to the kingdom of heaven, like the kingdom of God, right? In other words, God's kingdom. Like, how do we inherit that? And when we study the word and study Jesus Christ, his whole life purpose was to give us the keys to how to inherit the kingdom of God. Yeah. And because, like, as as promised, there was a, a time to be conceived, a birth. It is a time to die physically, right? There's a physical death. Yeah. But spirituality, spirit is just energy. And energy can never be destroyed or created. It's only transferred from one party to the next. Sir yeah. Isaac Newton, law of cons conservation of energy, you know. So earth here is just a party. We're partying here on this earth, but we party with a purpose. We probably shine the light of God. And yeah. and as we leave this earth, we go into a, a realm of eternity of light and heaven, mm -hmm. right? So that's what it means. It means like to be um like live in heaven on earth. Because there's hell on earth. Yeah. You know, I've been in hell. I've been hell on earth. But like the choice is yours. Do you rather live in heaven? You know, what there's no suffering, is full of light, full of uplift, encouragement, or do you rather live in torment in hell where it's burning? Where it's like regretful, so that's 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 the meaning of it, bro. Just to live free, live eternal, live in light, and shine light for God. That's just how we said, little just right now off a of camera. Most of us are locked up in a cell in our own mind and soul and body. That the key to get out is right there. All you got to do is just turn it. Yeah. So what are you willing to do in order to get to that door to turn the key to get out of that? Stop staying in the back of the room. Stop staying in that little corner and feel yeah. like there's no way Stop out. Stop playing victim, bro. Boss up, man. Boss up. Get up off the couch, bro. Get up off the bed. And boss up. It really creates your life because God gave you the vision, and that's for your responsibility to create it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, really, we got to boss up. I have to boss up. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Fat. Amen. Bro, yeah. preach, bro. Preach. Let's do this. This is that shift. That. This is that shift at the end of the show where it's just like, Yo, stop fucking complaining about yeah. what's happening in your life yeah. and start and boss up. Yeah. No, nobody's going to make an excuse for you when you're not performing. Right. So why would you do it to yourself? Yeah. Get your ass up and keep going. Yeah. And if there's something you guys can all do when you listen to this, man, think about this really good. Think about it deeply. Get your ass up and keep going, dog, yeah. because yeah. It, yeah, being stuck at the bottom is a lot worse than... Than being here. Yeah. We've said it, bro. We said it on the podcast a lot of times before. Say that shit, dude. Stop playing the victim. Yeah. Get your ass up. Do your part. Right. Feel good about what you do. Yeah. And don't give a fuck about what anyone thinks, bro. Yeah. You did your part. You feel good about it. Yeah. And your responsibility is to do what's good for you. Don't, don't, it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. You control you. You don't control anyone else. Wait. You know? Do you? Tell him. There you go. Say it. Hold on. What is, there's a. I'm trying to look for all the fucks I give about what people say about yeah. me, oh, and I can't find it. Oh, I can't I find, find it, it I dog. Find it. You know what I'm I saying? Find it. I can't. I can't find like, it. I can't find any, bro. So <laughs> and we, we we usually end in this part. I don't want to. I really don't want to end it, but we usually end this podcast. As a quote based podcast. Yes, sir. Yeah. And he's usually the one that ends it, All but right. I really want to take over this time. Yeah. Just because, you know what? It's time for me to do my part about this, you know? Yeah. Is there a quote you live by, bro? Is there a quote you. Man, you, I feel like, you know, the paradigm shift with Bob Proctor, right? Once you set that goal, it's just like a straight paradigm pyramid effect. Like you just incline to that. You know, like I said, I'm going to be the greatest designer ever lived on this earth and it's going to be amongst louis vuitton montclair saint laurent god's kingdom started in the living room of long beach north side in the hood and um the key is in order to get to your end goal is to start simple as that bro just simple as that i'm gonna uh, keep it straight simple uh, bro straight simple i love that I love start that. like it's, you the all answers wasn't there i just started and all the answers started coming, started coming. as hey, it's going I love that. I love that. Wow. Shit, bro. That was good. We need, we need, bro. Go for it. That, right. No, no, oh, you. You're ending it, right? You, I'm ending it. That's, that's you do your, your part, bro. I'm glad you're doing this. I would love for you. I, I want to hear yours, bro. Honestly, the best advice you can ever get from anybody is yourself. Give yourself the best advice. Give yourself the courage. Give yourself that power and, and the belief that you can actually do this. And once you step out there 
into the light, yeah. shine. Right. Shine like you know how you yeah. know how to. And I promise you the lights will never come off. Nah. That's nah. me. I though. love that. Yeah, you hey, know like, that's hey, like God says, bro, like a lamp cannot be hidden, bro. Like, like they don't tuck it beneath their bed, bro. Yeah. They sh- let it shine. Like a town built on the hill cannot be hidden. It's yeah. just evident, bro. It's just right there in front of you. That's right. So let me, ask, it. let me ask this question, man. Oh. Dylan. Jeez. You got a quote for us. You want to end this? What's Let's quote? do this, What's dog. That quote Let's run um, I'm a, I'm a quote uh, Kurt Cobain. If I'm not wrong with this, and it says, "They laugh at you because you're different, but remember to laugh at them because they're all the same." Ooh. Ooh. There you go. <laughs> hey, man. Hey. This, this has been a pleasure. Amazing. This bro. has been amazing. On a rainy day, we are shining. On a cloudy day, we are shining here. That's because of the energy that's brought into this room. Amen. I mean, as the fa- infamous uh, Blood in Blood Out movie, Pocos Pero Locos. Pocos Pero Locos. Hey, there you go. Man, there's only a few of us, but we heavy with it. Right. Yes, it might be just a couple of us, but it's our energy. It's like we have hundreds of us. Yeah, the chosen and, and The chosen ones. We are the ones that are putting this out there. We're the ones putting this message out there. We've never missed a Monday. We ain't missing a Monday. Consistency. My stay guy. Tuned. Stay tuned every Monday. Owner of God's Kingdom, Stephen. Is there you here, go. Man. I appreciate you. Go check you. out his stuff. Hey. He's got some fire stuff. Trust hey, me, bro. Make sure I got you, so much more to share. Make sure, yeah. Make sure you tap in. Yeah. Look at look at this jacket, the hey, drip man. that he has. Everything has, has so, everything everything some good has quality. So. I'll tell you that. Spread love. That's the message, you know. Yes, sir. And you know, God's Kingdom is the home of kings and queens in the Northern Light. You know where the stars are shining amongst you. It's not the star that shines the light, but the, the light that shines the star. And when you enter the kingdom of heaven, it's well done, my good and faithful servant. You know what I'm saying? It's the all-star series. And uh, tap in with me at godskingdom.us on all platforms. YouTube, God's, King, God's Kingdom Clothing. Instagram, God's Kingdom.us. And uh, let's, let's build go. this kingdom together so we can shine light for God. And we spurred it via garments, you know, glorify God through garments. Hey, man, let's purpose. do this. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, I love toast that. of life, man. I love it. Toast, toast, toast of life, the podcast, man. It's a toast of life. Hold on, hold on. Come on, man. We got to be toast of life. Pour the shot. Pour the shot. Hey, we're going to come right back and get the shots ready. And by no means, I do not get drunk. You know what I'm saying? I don't condone in drunkenness, but I condone in, like, celebratory life aspects. We got to remember, Jesus drank wine, but he never got drunk. That one's still on? <laughs> He turned water into wine, you know? Like, dr- it's a bad getting drunk in that. Yeah, exactly. When you do too much, beyond Control your actions, and if you're going to make it, do not blame anybody oh, else. Do not blame anybody else. The message to this, drink responsibly. Do not let addiction take over your life. Yeah. And if you feel like it's taking over, take a step back and reassess yeah. everything. Yeah, don't 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 even involve yourself unless you have control over it. Don't let it control you over you. Don't. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to need eight, eight meetings after this, but... I mean, as uh, infamous DJ Khaled says too, God did. God, God did. did. If no yes, one believed sir. in us, God did, right? Yes, so they taught us a life. Hey, God did all that. You know how yes, we do. Sir. Make sure you tune in, you subscribe, share, and let's go. Subscribe to Toast of Life, man.